Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp. I'm here to usher you into the weekend. It is the last weekend in September, which also means it is homecoming weekend in which the University of Montana Grizzlies will be taking on Idaho State. There's going to be a big parade in the downtown Missoula area. They're going to be lighting the amps sometime tonight. Uh, there's just a lot of things going on. It's homecoming week. You know, it's, uh, it's going to be a big week. And if you want to know more information about the uh, homecoming parade, you can go to uh, umt.edu for all your information and events for the homecoming uh, festivities happening today and tomorrow with the parade kicking off at 10 a.m. in which MCAT will be filming uh, the parade and live streaming it through our Facebook page, Missoula's Community Media Resource. So, breaking news this morning. Uh, Dianne Feinstein is dead and with, uh, after more than 30 years on the Senate. The Southern California held many other older Democratic views from a center-left position and towards the end of uh, that many of her staff took upon many of the roles uh, that she took. Uh, she was kind of in a, a long, slow decline throughout the last couple months of her Senate seat. Um, Mitch McConnell uh, also had recent senior moments as well, which uh, brought to life that a lot of the uh, senators and a lot of the uh, folks up there as well, there's kind of like this joke where it's just like, oh, it's just like uh, uh, the Senate is basically old people daycare. And that's kind of like the joke that was going on there. But this is kind of like going on to the idea that um, maybe there's a certain time when uh, people should retire from politics altogether. So when you look back at some of the early days and lining up with the more recent pictures, it's clear Feinstein was not at her best. And it's just kind of sad that uh, any party in power would let uh, somebody wouldn't let somebody go just because of fear of losing a vote in the Senate. So, you know, she was 90 years old and I'm going to move on from there. So I always like uh, following NASA and space news. And in this time, NASA has been working on a project to collect space, ro space rocks from an asteroid in an attempt to understand the makings of life in the universe. So they found a carbon rich uh, asteroid known as the Osiris Rex. Um, and the, actually, the Osiris Rex went to, let's see. I'm, I'm getting off my notes for a second there. So, so the part of this is they went to an asteroid to understand the making of the universe. They, collect, they collected this from 200 million miles away. This basically took, uh, this launch was in 2016 and landed in 2018 with uh, time spent uh, studying the asteroid. And after all the, uh, the time landed back just this last week, the $1 billion mission culminated in triumph after a nail biting th uh, final 13 minutes on Sunday morning when the uh, craft came um, rushing down to Earth with a space capsule entering the atmosphere 36 times the speed of sound and fell towards a military training range in the desert near Salt Lake City. The capsule blackened from its very re-entry through the atmosphere. It almost looked like a UF show uh, charcoal brisket the size of a mini fridge. The next big thing is to clean the, is to use a clean room, avoid any earthly contamination for the study of how life existed on this carbon-rich asteroid. Another big project on the horizon is Mars Rock, which will be returning in 2033. That seems to be the big plan is that they're trying to collect some Mars rocks as well. So we'll be looking towards that. Um, UAW, the United Auto Workers, uh, just as I was wrapping up my last show, they gained some ground with Ford while other companies like GN and Stellanos were being targeted. Uh, thus far, 36% wage increase over four years with plenty of benefits to help union employees retain their jobs transitioning to electric vehicles. On top of that, a 32-hour work week, four days a week. The fear is uh, the change of vehicle types would create a new way of manufacturing which could see workers out of the job in the transitional period of American history. This is as, uh, as if you can afford an electric car on top of uh, the cobalt mining, which is controlled by the majority of the Chinese government, hence the concern of jobs overseas for the main ingredients, cobalt. Friday saw strikes go to uh, 35, 38 locations in 20 states as negotiations with Fords are holding off strikes in some of those plants, but more than 18,000 workers of the 146,000 in the union are now on strike and have successful enough to impact the wallets of the big three, as the unions call them. Many saw an expansion of strikes on Stellanos and GM, which covered a specific parts and distribution sales in over 20 states. Uh, 60,000 of the 162,000 new workers are out of Detroit, Michigan alone, mind you, that's how many people are actually part of the union out of the Motor City. Tuesday saw Joe Biden join the line, which the mainstream media has coined the first time a sitting president has joined the picket line in a supporting of a union. Uh, AP reported, no deal, no wheels. Workers chanted as Biden arrived at the General Motors Parts Distribution Warehouse, one of the several facilities that had been targeted in the whitening strikes, now on its uh, probably uh, 
then it was 12th day. I would say probably it's like 16th, 17th day. No pay, no parts. Biden supported the 40% raise for union workers. UAW President Sean Fain said car prices have risen 35% while our, our wages 6% and CEOs gave themselves a 40% raise in the last four years. Trump called Biden's visit nothing more than a PR stunt from crooked Joe Biden to distract gaslight the American people from a disastrous Bidenomics policies that led to so much economic misery across the country. And of course, Wednesday saw Trump host a rally in Michigan to throw his support to the union. Trump addressed around 500 workers, including the UAW members at Drake Enterprises, a non-unionized car parts manufacturer in Macomb County, a few miles away from where Biden spoke to striking employees picket on the Ford facility. This is uh, more or less an attempt to pull focus from the GOP primary uh, debate that happened that same night. Um, and so far, Fain uh, preferred not to back any candidate as this is beyond politics in this movement and also mentioned another Trump president would be disastrous. Uh, union leaders said that Trump's record in the White House speaks for itself. Union leaders have said his first term was far from worker friendly, citing unfavorable rulings from the nation's top labor board and the U.S. Supreme Court, as well as the unfulfilled promises of automotive jobs. While the United Auto Workers Union has withheld an endorsement in the 2024 presidential race, its leadership has repeatedly rebuffed Trump. Um, this is in response to the strike by the CEOs foisting blame on higher prices to the workers. However, uh, President Fain has also mentioned that the owners had eight weeks to bargain before their uh, um, deal uh, basically sunset and they decided to go on strike. So that's kind of what's happening in the world. That's just a lot of different kind of news happening, but let's kind of go bring it back to Missoula, Montana. And if you haven't already noticed, the train tracks crossing streets like uh, Broadway ha are, are, have been removed and paved over. In Missoula, they're a bigger push to develop former Montana rail link tracks that cut through Missoula from Reserve Street to the downtown area. I have a picture I'm going to show you guys right now. And this is kind of like the plans that they w wish to improve the Bitterroot Trail. And so it's marked in red. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. And so essentially this whole area is going to be uh, redeveloped, make it safer, make it easier for folks. And not to mention the big move for the um, crossing on Broadway that goes over the train tracks, it was paved over. And part of that is that that uh, uh, train track bridge, um, I don't know the name exactly, they're gonna uh, convert that into more of a pedestrian bike trail at some point. In Missoula, there are three big pushes to uh, redevelop the four former Montana railing tracks as it cuts through Missoula from reserve to downtown Missoula Redevelopment Agency this week, approved $65,000 contract uh, uh, directing uh, Cushing Terrell to design the and engineering lighting on the trail's 2.7 mile stretch from south side of Missoula to Clark Fork River. So more lighting opportunities using TIFFs. They'll leverage the funds to uh, uh, raised on lighting this section for folks wanting to use the bike trail with a bigger vision of using the old railroad bridge over the Clark Fork as a bike pet option for further up the California Street Bridge option. But that's not the main point of this story. Missoula Current reports this new lighting district will begin uh, sometime next spring. The exit strategy also details the priorities, including the uh, build out of water mains and sidewalks within the district and redeveloping California Street, which could make room for another affordable housing project, sustainable portions of the Clark Fork River Bank also included. So there's a lot going on here as well. And um, uh, one thing that also uh, happened in uh, Montana has also uh, reverberated in the world. So in the state of Montana, we sued the uh, state for not upholding its uh, climate goals. And that's part of the uh, con our Montana Constitution for a Clean and Livable Climate that inspired Europeans. So some youths from Europe are using are suing 32 different countries for who have violated climate actions initiatives. Um, the court uh, are increasingly seen by activists as a way to sidestepping politics and holding government to, to account. This would also uh, give fines to various countries that violate this. So, you know, why now? Politics and voting for the right person has been met with very slow progress in the uh, Portuguese college student, Sylvia Olivier, um, sorry if I butcher that, whose country suffered from wildfires uh, uh, um, that resulted in hundreds dead in 2017. Very real evidence was presented by modern studies to be able to leverage the data in their favor, but the difference from Montana's constitution, which was written in the aftermath of mine oper operations and other uh, uh, operations, which include the Berkeley pit. Um, and that was one of the 
like evidence that were used against our own state. But so far, this would target uh, the amount of emissions these 32 countries produce through trade and policy. You know, climate change is real when things like fire seasons are the norm. And the amount of money Montana has put away to prevent wildfires have reached billions in federal aid. So Montana was much more lucky this year compared to last years past. When I was a kid in Montana, maybe wildfires would happen every couple of years, five, ten years beforehand. But now it's such a normalized thing that we just, you know, it's, we take it with a stride in a way. So, so that's kind of like one of the things that are happening here as well. And I also want to talk about how a lot of federal uh, um, firefighters are getting cut in their pay. And this has to do with uh, USDA warrant entry level employees could see their base drop nearly 20,000 from just under 60 to 40,000. That's a third of your wage gone from uh, uh, assisted federal subsidies to help people pay people to fight fires and, and basically to retain people and get people back the next year. So California has recurring fires year round while places like Montana, Washington are dealing with their own droughts at different parts of the season. The pressure mounts each year as workers fear worse fire seasons across North America. This year, for example, over 2,200 uh, federal firefighters were deployed to Canada, the largest mobilization of U.S. Canadian resources in the last 40 years of an agreement that allowed for a shared personnel. You know, California, had, uh, uh, Canada had it the worst because they don't have a lot of access to all the trails and there's not many ways for trucks and vehicles to actually get up there. Uh, so they would have to necessarily fly and drop a lot of retardant onto a lot of their fires. And so far, it's basically a waiting game for these fires to grow out up in Canada. And it's almost been a complete disaster to contain any of the fires that have been happening up there. So it's kind of interesting that, you know, uh, how like different kind of infrastructures, different kind of places, you know, it's one of the things that Cal uh, Canada also has to look into is basically to get access to some of these deep fires so they can prevent the spread of a lot of the bigger fires from affecting uh, the the rest of the uh, the world because a lot of the smoke from Canada really just kind of settled in a lot of the areas in the northern United States. We got some in Montana, but not a lot compared to what those folks got up in the East Coast, especially like Chicago and Detroit areas. So um, back to uh, more information about MCAT. MCAT, like I said, will be covering the UM um, homecoming parade on Saturday for those who cannot go. will be live starting at 10 a.m. when the parade starts scheduled downtown off Pine Street and the Red X's. For MCAT, we like we're, we'd like the uh, Western Montana community, we'd like to also thank the Western Montana Community Center for their support because without them, we wouldn't be able to live stream for you guys. So, University of Montana has also been going through better times with the freshman class being one of the largest in recent years. Uh, they represent a 12.5 increase compared to last year's. 66% of students are in state residence. So there's a lot of things to look forward to this year at the University of Montana as well. And Missoula is on the grow and phase two of the uh, terminals are underway, uh, which plans to be open by 2025, while Phase 3 is looking for funding to continue. And this is to do with the, uh, um, let's see. Oh yeah, that's, that has a lot to do with the fact that, um, th what I mean by terminal is that the airport also looks to expense terminal. Okay, I'm kind of going off the tracks. I'm, I'm, I'm bouncing around, I'm skipping through a lot of notes, but for the most part, Big part of Missoula is that there's a big population growing. More people, more kids are coming to school. More people are traveling to the point where they're uh, at a point where they're looking to do phase two of the terminal at the Missoula uh, International Airport, which will be planned on opening in 2025. While phase three is looking for funding to continue, but if 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 use goes up, so does revenue and opportunity for investment. So up next, we got some promos uh, before a pre-critic from our Saturday dropping kids and more. You have to wake up. Listen to me. MCAT's Kid Centric Activity is back with Saturday Drop In starting September 2nd. This weekly creative experience lets kids use stop animation to breathe life into their Legos and more. They're only limited by their imagination, and here at MCAT, we promote creativity for kids aged 8 to 14. Ah! Join us inside Missoula Public Library every Saturday from 1 to 3 p.m.
れ。Hey guys, we're back. We got some movies we're going to be talking about. It's time for a pre-critic where I pre-judge a movie. We got an extra, like, there's a lot of movies coming out this week, and I, I tell you what, we're kicking things off with The Creator. A sci-fi from the messed up minds of Rogue One, Star Wars, and Godzilla 2016 comes his own Star Wars, Star Wars since he had his chance with the studio, but the studio interfered. Enjoy a robot child messiah in this film set in the future where robots exist, therefore should not be trusted. 80s now. 80s to now showed us that flaws of having a robot society intermixed with humans, and this is, will probably probably have plenty of allegories for. We can't we all just get along? Whoa, lasers, space battles, cool, but very terrible for oppressing those darn silly robots. You know, of course. And then we have dumb money from the real life uh, Wall Street stonks. Stocks comes the movie based on the Gabe Stop stocks. GameStop stocks say say that five times fast, while well, rumors of Wall Street hedging the popular gaming company GameStop only to have the common, common people known as dumb stocks buy up stocks and screw over those hedge front operators who pump and dump stocks to make money at the expense of those who would go bankrupt a company for a cheap payday. Then we got Saw 10 or Saw X. Ooh, we've got to get that pre-ultimate torture porn movie that will make you go, ew, hee hee, go, that's gross. Uh, in a series of films that ease, uh, that have an easy plot mixed with elaborate death machines to put people in extreme situations to stop them from being the worst versions of themselves. Yes, it's using torture as therapy. And that's basically what these movies are. So we have a bunch of other short movies that I'm going to kind of go through really quick. We have a family movie. Yo, when are they going to release the body cam footage of the dog sniffing butts without consent, yo? Uh, Paw Patrol, the movie, uh, watch a fictionalized world of crime fighting, emergency response dogs that will keep your kid quiet for an hour and 32 minutes of a runtime. Then we got The Kill Room, a story about a hitman who becomes an artist, or should I say artiste, uh, in a comedy with Samuel Jackson and Uma Thurmer. Good to see the, they're in these movies. Has to deal with the fact that his past comes back to bite them in the butt. However, a payday for his painting is on the horizon. Then we got a sci-fi movie called 57 Seconds. Have you ever wanted to go back in time? Uh, throw a number out there. 57 Seconds is this movie. Uh, then we got Carlos. So uh, you like biopics? So this is a biopic about Carlos Santana. You really need to know more people. I could sing. Uh, well, it's just like the ocean under the moon. And then we got um, Invisible Beauty documentary how to learn the needs of updating beauty standards from the black woman struggle to just be hot on the cover of magazines. And, um, what happened to that one? Okay, this one. This one's called Warrior Strong. Another uh, comedian, Andrew Dice Clay, on his journey to becoming a, uh, kind of like a father figure in movies and shows. So, you know, it's kind of like one of, the, one of those weird things. is like you have a uh, controversial comedian, and then you put him in a family kind of kids movie, and then you got your uh, a family star. It's kind of like how Jack Black became so famous in the end. So it's interesting. A lot of comedians kind of doing their thing, uh, just uh, trying to see what other movies they can hit, even though that more people would see them in person on, in a stadium tour like Andrew Dice Clay than they would ever see him in a movie. There we go. Those are your pre-critic movies um, that for your enjoyment. Up next, we have a, a dub and stuff from the 1932 movie Farewell, Farewell to Arms. Oh, just paint me like one of your French girls, Jack. Armpit hair that looks like a wingsuit. Not that there's anything wrong with it. You know, there's a lot of good things about how armpit hair you know, is natural and gross. All right. <clears throat> no, that's enough. Stop. Jack, please. I'll never let you go, I swear. If this is your attempt at humor, I'm not laughing. Oh, you think you're all fancy since you got your slick back Christian Bale haircut from Dark Knight Rises. So much product in your hair. <laughs> what are you doing anyways? Trying to write a letter or something? I love my ulcer more than I love my wife. See you later. Um, Enjoy um, your... Excuse me, <laughs> um, I need some help. <laughs> what could Mr. Good-looking need my help for? Oh, come on. Pay attention to me for a second. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. It's just a little, uh, ink. It's not just that. I just... I just... I just... 
I don't know how to read and write. Huh, that's kind of funny. Maybe you shouldn't be writing a letter in the first place. Maybe you should be getting other people to write your letter for you, and then you should stop thinking so much and just die in the army like most people do. Oh, making fun of people who are literate because I'm a horrible person. Boop, 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 boop. This cuff, this glove. Excuse me! Ooh. Hey! Oh, you got something to report to me? A private check is wanted on the front lines. All right, I'll go tell him. It's at the best of the King of England himself, George the whatever. Oh, well, I guess we should be going then. <laughs> do, 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 can't read or write. Oh, I'll show him. I'll show him for sure. I'll write this letter. All right, we're here with your city council report. And honestly, there's not too much details in the city council report because I honestly didn't think that there was too much happening in just terms of just like basic information, basic knowledge, and just kind of basic uh, um, just grants and all that kind of stuff. But that's kind of like just what's happening here as well. But I also wanted to remind folks is that uh, Marshall Mountain, the acquisition, it's going to be a bo both a joint city and county. And this is my last warning for y'all because it's going to happen next uh, Wednesday, the Missoula Public Library from 3 to 5 p.m. on the fourth floor. And this will get uh, people to voice any concerns or any questions they have for the city and county's acquisition of the formal ski mountain known as Marshall Mountain. And so this whole area Area will be uh, acquired through the city and county of Missoula through the open space bonds and I believe they will be spending upwards of a million dollars a pop and then other funds will be raised through private public partnerships so if you want to know more uh, October 4th they'll give their final presentation and have some Q&A for people as an outreach here at the Missoula Public Library at 3 o'clock next Wednesday and one of the topics as they discuss from the consent agenda was a grant for 2023's um, justice assistance grants via JAG funds. Um, Mike Collier, Missoula Police Chief, uh, talks more about this. This year, um, the, uh, the programs we'd like to spend the money on include renewing what we call Secure Warrant, which is an electronic way for us to communicate with courts and prosecutors to more kind of efficiently uh, pass through a re request for arrest warrants and search warrants and, return and property returns and so on. Uh, the second program is to renew our subscription to an online uh, program called Virtual Academy. Virtual Academy is a way that we roll out training and information through our briefing reports. So for example, if we have a new policy that we want to go out, we put it into Virtual Academy. They introduce it to the teams through the briefings and then that's a way for us to monitor for people to acknowledge they've received the training and so on. The third uh, program on this uh, for this year's grant is to invest in Sotoxa, which is uh, a way for us to do roadside drug screening through evaluating saliva. If you can think about the portable breath test instruments that we use for estimating <coughs> breath alcohol concentration for people driving under the influence of alcohol, this is kind of the equivalent for illicit drugs and it is, has state statute now that it supports it in Montana. So that was one of the uh, bigger concerns as we are going to legalize marijuana in the state of Montana was how would you test somebody for marijuana besides the typical smell test. But new tech, new tools, and finding crime, much of the crime in Missoula, according to last year's crime report, a majority had to do with crimes related to drug use and intention to distribute. Another the note was this would also go towards creating better incentives for retaining officers. And then to wrap the Grant Creek speed limit reduction, here's uh, Ryan Gulliff transportation engineer for the city of Missoula. And so this is a big part of, you know, you're just getting off I-90 and they want to help mitigate some of the speed, especially when you start going up Grand Creek where the road starts curving and going around. Um, so this is what he had to say. Some concerned residents in the area about um, some safety concerns at some of the intersections north of I-90 on Grand Creek Road related to visibility. We went out and, and investigated those concerns and found that um, they did exist at two of those three intersections, and we, we noted, which were Expo Parkway and Stonebridge Road, and we noted that Prospect Drive also had some sight distance concerns. So we, uh, we, we weighed some potential options to mitigate those safety risks and determined that the, uh, adjusting the speed limit on Grant Creek Road was a, a 
feasible, cost-effective alternative to do that. Um, of course, that requires an engineering study per state statute. So we move forward with an engineering study. Um, and over that time, documented that um, with those existing site distance concerns at the intersections, um, looking at the existing speed profile out there of current traffic, some of the roadway geometrics uh, as through the windy road segment north of Stonebridge Drive and investigating crash data as well. Um, we, we were able to conclude that 35 miles per hour is the most appropriate spe posted speed limit for Grand Creek Road. All right. And so like, you know, <clears throat> You know, transitioning from highway to uh, slower traffic can be pretty hard because you're so used to uh, traveling so fast for so long. But then when you get off and go up a, just a road, it's like you like 45 already feels too slow once you get off the highway. So it's it, it, it can be hard to slow down after upwards of 80 miles per hour. But, you know, there's plenty of uh, slow city uh, council days. I, I, you know, I can tell you. But right now the city moved to close any hearings to do with the Fort Missoula Commons. They moved on to talk about putting this off until next year. Gwen Jones talks a little bit more about this ongoing um, Fort Missoula Hospital uh, development. If we're going to continue this into the new year, it's an opportunity for us to rework the briefing schedule a little bit. We had some public comment that there was concern that there wasn't enough time to digest the briefs that would be submitted prior to us hearing this and after the hearing so we can um, Put a little bit more space in that schedule so that there's more time for everyone to digest that so um that's and we worked very hard trying to put this into november and ultimately it just wasn't workable because of um the uh, n not everyone who needed to be there was going to be available and i did not want to schedule this in december because frankly it needs um, focus and attention on it and december is not the best month for that so those are the reasons why we are continuing this i encourage public comment in any um respect regarding this issue to continue to come to city council and the fort missoula commons email address that the clerk's office has tipped up all of that will go into the document depository um but this will be heard in early 2024. all right so it just gets pushed down the line a little bit further just to determine whether or not the city wants to move forward with any kind of development in this particular area and then um yeah um, up next, uh, we also uh, have a little bit of a shout out from the mayor of Missoula, uh, Jordan Hess, giving some shout out to MCAT for um, <clears throat> basically moving back inside city council chambers instead of having those typical Brady Bunch looks that you uh, have been so used to seeing in the last uh, couple of months since the pandemic started. So here is uh, Jordan Hess. Um, communications from the mayor. I just want to thank MCAT um, for uh, being back in person. I've been watching the um, channel 190 feed a little bit uh, out of the corner or on one screen here. It looks great. I'm excited. I, th I think this is a really good public service to return to the cameras around the room and to eventually um, get everyone um, not having to use the Teams meeting if they're in the room. Um, so this, will this I think, will be a good procedural um, improvement for council and I think it'll be a nice public service. We're working through kinks and we'll um, we'll see a few changes over the coming weeks um, but I'm really excited for the end product and I want to thank MCAT and I want to thank um, IT and the clerk's office uh, and um, a variety of city staff who've been working on improving the meeting experience behind the scenes for the last several weeks. Uh, I think the behind the scenes part other than the fact that it showcases that I don't have very much hair uh, from that camera it's um, it's a very good thing. Um. All right. And so, you know, one of the things is that um, uh, what's working towards it as well is that people who still can't attend the meeting that wish to give public comment live will still be able to have those options as well. They're not getting rid of uh, the Teams Zoom kind of like call in meeting kind of schedule. So people will still be able to watch through Teams. Uh, it's just that Teams will look a little bit different in more terms of what the uh, TV channel essentially. Uh, the TV show of no, well the t the the TV version of the city council will look a lot more like the team so MCAT will be able to uh, provide that moving forward so <clears throat> so also during the uh, uh, comments from the city staff they also mentioned that um, 4-H uh, 
is having signups until October 1st. And if you have a kid that's interested in getting into 4-H, now is the time to do it. It is a great opportunity, looks good on a resume, not to mention there's a lot of scholarship opportunities in the thousands of dollars for basically just looking after cattle uh, so that you can show off during the, uh, the fair and just kind of take part of the uh, old traditional uh, Missoula kind of way from way back when. So um, other other things that kind of happened, public safety and health drove, uh, dove into the contract with Blind Night Security at shelters in Missoula. They will provide 24 seven service for neighborhoods around Johnson Street Shelter and other sites that provide homeless services. It passed with some public comments that attacked the city, but uh, that took away from the uh, subject matter overall. So Public Works um, wanted to uh, open Mary Jane Boulevard Street through the new M uh, Mullen Build Project that allowed allocating $130,000 to finish, which they approved and moved on to Monday's consent agenda. Uh, land use and planning Clark Fork and Bitterroot floodplains, the uh, remapping project is still in progress. However, the updated map for the Clearwater River is being adopted by Missoula County. Um, Cassie Trafard talks about some of these updates a little bit more on this thing. <laughs> The updates include clear language for existing process and regulations. The way we regulate floodplain is not changing as a result of the amendments. It's just easier to understand. The amendments result in more legible definitions and inclusion of missing definitions. And staff took this as an opportunity to correct errors in the code. All right, so there's a lot of that going on, and not to mention there's a big uh, push towards the city in terms of uh, including equity. And so the JEDI program, which was launched in the early 2020s, they're trying to, uh, the whole point is that they're uh, gonna be showing some of the fruits of their labor with uh, the Wednesdays with the mayor. Uh, the mayor was not in attendance, but this was part of their ongoing thing. So Emily, uh, Emily Glucan with the planning talks about the growth in Missoula and how they are dealing with uh, some of this stuff while utilizing the concept of equity to help the future of uh, the city planning. Um, this is a little bit, I guess, bigger and extensive because we are addressing our growth policy and our development codes at the same time and um, doing kind of a, a bigger shift. And uh, instead of maybe just a review of what's not working and making some tweaks, this is an acknowledgement that we need to make some pretty significant changes and really spend some time analyzing and being thoughtful about what those changes are so we can um, address what we're facing now and set us up for anything in the future too. Yeah, and then a big part of that, uh, the interview during that time as well, was the idea that there were a lot of people that moved to the city of Missoula in a short amount of time and the housing stock became a little bit more competitive. Uh, higher prices just by the national standard, not to mention the also the demand of living in Missoula too didn't help. So Ashley Wells, community engagement specialist, talks about the growth from the people's need and a little bit more about that. We're really trying hard to reach as many folks as we possibly can, especially folks that may not typically be engaged with some of our projects at the city. Um, and then looking to, you know, break down some of the barriers to engagement for folks so that it is reflective that our vision for growth is reflective of what the full community wants. Um, and so it's very similar in that way. Um, and then ultimately, like Emily said, we'll result in a code that reflects what our future vision um, really says, which right now it doesn't. All right. So, uh, I mean, basically what the um, our Missoula growth policy did originally, and which was kind of launched in like 2016, 2018, and then fully implemented in like 2020s, 2022, was the uh, advent of the, I want to say, uh, the condo Marriott, where essentially you have businesses on the first level, community gatherings, different kinds of options for uh, office space, and then the second and upper levels, which are probably about, I would say, a story and a half higher than it would be if it was the first story. And then they would have a couple stories of just their condos where they live out of. So they create more of a built-in urban area where people can come and go and also have convenience and amenities built into the first level of where they live. And so that was kind of like one of the bigger moves from our Missoula. You know, taller buildings, closer you get to city and have more of that suburban evolution as you go further, further, further out. There have been a lot of uh, comments, and of course I've covered a lot of those uh, neighborhoods where just like, oh, this looks like a good neighborhood. Let's put a bunch of uh, uh, houses and properties really close together and just kind of work with that. And a lot of people in the neighborhood's like, I don't know about this. You haven't really fixed our sidewalks and you know our roads are kind of you know, blah. And so that was kind of like a, an ongoing theme. So they're trying to figure out exactly uh, how they can implement some of those main concerns 
as we are in a weird kind of transitional period because before the pandemic, the need for housing stock was very much like, yeah, you know, some people would buy a house here and there, you know, there were still opportunities. And then once the pandemic hit and people had the opportunity to work from anywhere in the world, they decided to move to places like Missoula. So most uh, reports focused on the low income housing options as they become more and more scarce in a growing Missoula. Um, I, I read a lot of the old school reports they uh, referred to in the documents online and then engaged with Missoula where they kind of targeted native populations and created obstacles to that prevent neighborhoods that would have option for many of those folks. Ashley talks about how COVID affected Missoula and um, talks a little bit more about that. Seen so much growth and so much change in our community. I think you said something, or you know, the last five years in particular, and I would say even since 2020 with the COVID-19 pandemic um, and a lot of folks moving here and potentially working remotely or just, you know, the change in demographic. I think um, we need to, while we still have quite a few folks that have lived here for such a long time, I am a Missoulian. I was born and raised in East Missoula. And so I care a lot. um, And I bring that local perspective as it relates to kind of really wanting to, you know, um, make sure that, that folks that have been here for a long time are represented in this project. But also, you know, the the sort of central tenet of our current growth policy is to focus inward because we don't want to go up the mountain or further out or sprawl around. Like we'd like to sort of keep our development where infrastructure already exists, where access to amenities and opportunities already exist. And so to do that, you know, we have to make sure first that that's still that we're still on the same page about that. But then also, like Emily's been saying, like, that's going to possibly mean some changes to the current zoning and code. And so it's really important to have that holistic conversation. And it's why we're doing both at the same time. All right. So that, that's part of the main um, push to go. And so far, they dug deep into the past and are looking forward through engagement and community in terms of reaching out in groups in Missoula for helping Missoulians help themselves. Again, you can get more information by going to engagemissoula.com. They're asking for people for some input on this particular thing to get further information. And Emily talks about why uh, equity is important on the planning process. I think it's extremely important for us uh, and would behoove us as a community to be uh, in a position of being proactive versus reactive. By the time we're reactive, um, we can't be as thorough and we're, we're kind of in the position of putting out fires for challenges that we're already experiencing versus uh, having the time to be proactive and really set ourselves up for a community that's um, what we all want to see. Well, regardless of uh, what the city plans to do when they implement the equity program within there, uh, changes constantly happening, a lot of people moving in, uh, development is happening, and this process is ongoing and they plan to implement the equity component to the zoning code by 2025. Up next, we have a taste of Andy Smintanka's Missoula documentary called A Place, sort of. And this is basically something that happened on September 14th, which I totally wish I would have uh, been a part of and went to at some point. But it was, uh, yeah, here's a little taste. Uh, it basically utilizes old film from 1924 till to, till uh, 1994, some old reels and some old footage of an old Missoula. So without further ado, here is a little taste. Excuse me, Jim, just where is this Missoula? In the western end of the state along the Continental Divide. But let's have Bill tell us about it. That's what he's here for. Well, thanks, Jim. It's always a pleasure to talk about my hometown. There's one thing I can say right now. Gentlemen, you'd like Missoula. taste of old Missoula and more. Okay, let's jump right into some of, some of your events. If you're interested in learning some things, Learning With Meaning Incorporated is doing a felt, a wood hat, a wool hat, sorry. There'll be a two hat 
felting class September with the Montana Folklore Society. Each class is all day from 9.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. and will be located outside the Learning with Meaning land located in Missoula. Students will learn about the steps and principles creating their own felted wool hats and more. Um, Museum open hours at the uh, Spectrum Discovery Center. They are the University of Montana Spectrum Discovery Area is open for all visitors of all ages to explore science through engaging of exhibits and activities. They're open most days, Tuesdays through Saturdays from 10 a.m. to about 6 p.m. I may be wrong about the 6 p.m., but yeah, you, um, you might want to double check that for sure. Missoula Food Bank meal distribution. Um, one of the things is that the potential government shutdown, I don't know, like with stuff like that, because when the government shutdowns, one of the things that does suffer is the Missoula Food Bank di meal distribution. But we won't know for sure until who knows what happens this weekend. There's always a threat of government shutdown. It never ends up happening because of the, the overall political disaster that would happen to the people who would prevent that thing kind of happening. So not to get political, but yeah, the Missoula Food Bank distribution is open today and it will be open from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. today. There are longer days on Tuesdays and Thursdays, but it's a good opportunity for people to get uh, cheap, nutritious food with a very slide, uh, big sliding scale. Tiny Tales and Story Time, as always, at 10.30 a.m. here at the Missoula Public Library on the second floor. Um, have your kids learn to read and all that kind of stuff. Uh, opening week, Indigenous Selections from Matrix Press. Radius Gallery is proud to present the Matrix Press, which is has original prints by nine Native American artists who have created work in the press in recent years. Cutting edge print mini process for the University of Montana where visiting artists create limited edition prints in collaboration with students and faculty. Um, lunch at the Missoula Senior Center. It's a recurring event at the Missoula Senior Center starting at 11.30 a.m. for seniors who are looking for a lunch uh, in a venue. Uh, yarns and watercolor is back. So watercolor is back on the fourth floor starting at noon today. So if you're interested in doing some watercoloring, also do some yarns and stitch and crochet and that kind of stuff. It's also in the Blackfoot room. Uh, watercolor is in the Cooper room. Homecoming at the U of M. So starting at uh, 12 noon, they're going to have a luncheon. It's a reunion luncheon with the uh, class of 50 to 53, 60 to 63, and 70 to 73, that's the 1900s, mind you, uh, are invited to a reunion lunch during this year's homecoming festival. Come back to campus for a special event and enjoy catching up with some old classmates. And this is from noon to 2 p.m. I'm assuming they'll probably ask for money as well. Uh, Lego Club here at the Missoula Public Library at 2.30. This is a recurring event happening every week at 2.30 on Fridays inside the second floor of the Missoula Public Library. And then jumping ahead, Lifelong Learning Center is doing a country combo, two-step and swing. Finish this week strong. Um, work starts on Monday, life begins on Friday. Your body may be tired and your mind fatigued, but this happy hour will offer a wonderful mind and body balance. It's two-step and swing, and it's gonna be through the Lifelong Learning Center. Lifelong Learning Center is a, this is a five session class. It's $105. Many of these classes of the Lifelong Learning Center, they wanna pay their instructor, and they wanna make sure that uh, people have the opportunity to get certified in many different fields beyond just a, a two-step or a swing dance. And just because the kids get to go to school to learn doesn't mean it can stop, it will stop you from learning as well. So Sketching Missoula Zootown Arts Community Center is doing a sketching thing at 5.30 on Friday today. A party with the press, meet the team behind the news you read. MCT Center for Performing Arts is hosting a uh, meet the press um, at 5.30 p.m. Um, join Missoula for an evening of celebration, music, fundraising, and conversation with reporters and supporters of the Montana Free Press. Cheeb is going to be a funk band at Imagination Brewing Company at 6 p.m. tonight. Uh, Maker Date Cups, the Clay Studio of Missoula, wanted creative quality time with a partner. Ma the, the Maker Dates are perfect for a community for an evening, trying something new together, and it's at the Clay Studio of Missoula starting at 6 p.m. Uh, 7 p.m., there's going to be electronic music by Jai Wolf. Um, full moon cacao ceremony, if you're interested in doing the whole, like, I, it's the full moon, I should do something special, maybe something spiritual. So Sacred Alley is doing a uh, full moon with the evening of sacred cacao, which is chocolate, uh, meditation and movement. They just call this uh, chocolate and the, they should just call it, honestly, they just call it chocolate and the moon. It'll get more people going. So anyways, uh, for history buffs, Doolittle Raiders, uh, David Jonathan Thatcher with uh, Larry Munich. Chuck, uh, sorry about that. Um, calling all history enthusiasts. History Birth is held every last Friday of each month from 7 to 9 p.m. Speaker with a lively, entertaining presentation of historic interest. This program will tell the story of David Jonathan Thatcher, Doolittle Raider. He was the one that they uh, bombed Japan then they, in a suicide mission that ended up them surviving by crashing in China and then basically globe trekking to a point where they can find a safe place where they can get shipped back to America. So David J. Thatcher, the uh, 70, 
Nine other Doolittle raids successfully accompanied the first air raid in Japan. So it's interesting. There's a lot of uh, things there, and it's uh, going to be great. Um, <coughs> Thatcher was born in Bridger, Montana, and was a Missoula resident as well. So that's what's happening tonight in the Missoula Public Library. It's always on the fourth floor. Um, um, yep, from 7 to 9 p.m. Alt Fest Roadshow, Missoula. If you're interested in watching some rock music, Monks is the place to be at tonight at 7 p.m. Roy Mira opening Dylan Running Crane is going to be some playing some folk music at the Zutan Arts Community Center tonight at 7 p.m. Nirvana and Devo sets performed live at the Badlander uh, rock music. They usually don't do a, live, a lot, lot of live music. They usually have Chris Moon every Saturday at 10 p.m. Karaoke at the Jack Saloon. Live music at Cranky Sam, Pub uh, uh, Cranky Sam Public House playing some rock music. Old so-and-sos at 7.30 p.m. Homecoming at the U of M, Yell Night prep, prep Rally. They're going to light up the M on the mountain and have all the fun with the band, alumni, and football team starting at 8 p.m. tonight at the University uh, Oval. Uh, Blue Moon and the Old Post at 8 p.m. Um, this is going to be some folk music. And then wrapping up is uh, Joan Zen at the Union Club at 9 p.m. tonight on Friday. So I'm going to is really itchy right now. All right, so that's your Friday events. So we're going to jump right into some of your Saturday events, as always. Uh, this is going to be pretty much... Uh, one more month until your uh, farmer's market outdoor downtown experience is going to be wrapping up for the uh, season. And this is going to be going on from 8 a.m. to about 1 p.m. in the downtown Missoula area until the end of October. So if you're interested in um, being part of uh, a play that's hosted by Base Missoula, this is uh, 800 words of transmigration of Philip K. Dick. So if you know uh, the movies Blade Runner, Do Andrews Dream of Electric Sheep, that was kind of a stories. Um, so Philip K. Dick is re a reinvention of the last few days of Philip K. Dick, the science fiction author who uh, had religious visions in 1974 when an extraterrestrial god appeared to him communicating with artificial intelligence. Based on a true story, the play begins with Philip novel Do Android Dream of Electric Sheep is being released as a Hollywood film Blade Runner. So it's a basically a play, a meta commentary about his life and about the release of Blade Runner. All right, Homecoming Hustle 5K, just to kick things off before the uh, Homecoming Parade, they're going to do a, of a 5K starting at 9.45, where it starts then and there, and it restarts at uh, 9.55. And speaking of the parade, like always, 10 a.m., uh, the Missoula, uh, the Missoula uh, Homecoming Parade is happening, featuring the University of Montana, local area MCPS schools, uh, profit and nonprofit sectors of Missoula that wish to be a part, and you can you, and the sign-up deadline obviously is passed. So uh, they usually have over 100 floats and 100 things most of the years, and this year they're going to be back in its old location off Pine Street. And if you're interested in uh, taking a museum tour after the parade, because hey, the parade's maybe uh, an hour and a half at most, you can go to uh, the Missoula Art Museum um, at 11 a.m. to get a nice guided tour of the all the uh, art leading until next Friday. Friday, which is first Friday, in which they'll have a new art exhibit. Women-led car maintenance, Missoula Urban Administration Project. This workshop is to give an overview of a variety of common car maintenance tasks, including how to change oil, check fluids, replace tire, and place windshield wipers. They will also talk about the basic of car engine and help you learn the lingo for talking to mechanics when your car is acting up, and this is women-led car maintenance. MCAT Saturday drop-ins every Saturday at uh, uh, 1 p.m. Uh, MCAT hosts a Saturday drop-in for kids to workshop and make stop animation films and more if they wish to do so. Um, and it's a drop-in. It's every Saturday from 1 to 3 p.m. and we do it until May, the end of May. Okay, volunteer tree planting in the parks. Hey, Skyview Park, you can kick things off and you want to plant some trees this season. Now is the time to do it. Um, Starting at 1 p.m. Skyview Park, they'll eventually move on to Garland Park and Russell Park West as they start finishing up. They ask you to bring your water bottle, work gloves, and wear uh, sturdy shoes and be ready for the weather because it is uh, bound to rain this weekend. It was raining last couple days. Um, and then also, uh, as we wrap up the big read in the Missoula Public Library, they're doing a Saturday matinee Disney's Newsies in honor of the Tramps and Newsboys featuring the Cold Millions. Join us for a matinee showing of Disney's 1992 to historic musical uh, Newsies. Just so you know, Christian Bale is in this movie singing. Um, he was Batman. <laughs> Batman, uh, Montana pumpkin truck painting class. Uh, painting with a Twist is doing a Montana pumpkin painting class at 2 p.m. Um, homecoming at the University of Montana football game, Grizz versus Idaho State, kickoff at 2 p.m. The fall gathering at the Moon Randolph of Homestead, it's the time to pick uh, apples, 
uh, Community Harvest Celebration Fundraising Benefits for the Moon Randolph Homestead, the Free Harvest Cider and Beer, Apple Pressing, Live Music, Dancing Under a Nearly Full Moon. This event is family friendly and starts at 5 p.m. at the Moon Randolph Homestead. Ten Cent Mule, Imagination Brew, uh, Brewing Company, is doing a bluegrass music starting at 6 p.m. Buck Cherry is going to be at the Wilma featuring rock music starting at 7 p.m. 7 p.m. at the Jack Salon is going to be playing some country music by Neil Elder at the Jack Salon. Dueling Pianos with Josh Farmer and Kyle Curtis at Stave and Hoop. The Dueling Pianos is back for the year. Small Paul uh, Scott P P um, Pemberton, O Theory, is going to play some rock music at Monk starting at 8 p.m. Cash for Junkers is going to play in the Rustic Hut. Hut uh, country music. I've never heard of the rest of cut. It must be a new venue. It's going to be interesting. A uh, Solid Snake Karaoke in the Bowling Alley at the Westside Lanes and Fun Center. It's the only Bowling Alley left in Missoula. Uh, we also have Let's Get It On, a Motown dance party at Suite 2. And that's uh, located just off of uh, 4th Street as your, yeah, it's kind of like by the train tracks off 4th Street. So it's an interesting location for sure, but they're going to do a Motown uh, dance party. Jackson Holt, Union Club Jam Band at 9 p.m. And uh, to wrap up, your uh, Saturday is also Chris Moon, as uh, always at, at Saturdays. And the um, Top Hat is hosting a band too. They usually don't, ho I don't see them uh, advertise too many things at their Top Hat on uh, Missoula events, but it's called Roots Within. Um, they, they're they doing that as well. Um, let's see. Doo -doo -doo. Oh, and of course, before I wrap up the show, I also wanted to mention that Spawn Con's uh, um, exhibits will be on display here at the Missoula Public Library. Most of them are on the fourth floor. A lot of them are in the lobby areas in the common spaces where people can just walk in, walk past them. These are interesting uh, design patterns made from recycled material from Home Resource in which they did their annual Spawn Con. And so there's a lot of stuff going on with that. Um, also, uh, I wanted to give you guys a heads up too, is on Sunday, the library will be giving away um, uh, solar eclipse glasses because we're having a solar eclipse on October 14th um, over the northern United States. The, the peak places will basically be the edges of the coast of Oregon on its way down through Texas. And so Missoula, Montana is roughly going to get 70% of the eclipse, which is still a substantial amount of the eclipse if, you're gonna, if you get plan on sticking around. Um, so it's going to happen on October 14th, and roughly it's going to be around 10.20 a.m. Montana Standard Time, MDT, all that, um, all, all that kind of stuff. So there's, um, it's going to be happening. I wanna, I'll probably give another shout out further as I'm talking um, in the future and also give a big push for the solar eclipse because we have a lot more lunar eclipses uh, around than we uh, do have solar eclipses around because I probably had my first solar eclipse experience in the northern hemisphere for the first time like five years ago. And so that was like the first time ever that I even know that there was a solar eclipse happening in the region. So it doesn't happen too often and I don't want you guys to miss out on it. So next um, uh, two weeks from Saturday. So. And okay, so I don't have really much more to say about this. I kind of uh, lost a lot of steam uh, with my push for uh, the uh, solar eclipse happening on October 14th. So for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramph. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend.